You're listening to Chameleon Church. Biblical antidotes for the modern man. With your host, Alan Aguirre. Well, it's another Tuesday, boys. Good morning. Good morning. Another Tuesday. You know, you know, I'm I'm not quite sure what the date is. I'm sure it was about a week or so ago, but we've we've uh, we're in our sixth year. <laughs> if you can believe that, wow. that's a long time. March is our anniversary, and it was um, 2018 when we started. So. Yeah, so we have been on the air every Tuesday for six years, if you can believe that. Isn't um, that yeah, crazy? I was, I was thinking last night, this is, I joined in April. We can't, we can't hear you. It sounded like your mic's not on. We were getting like a room type of thing. <laughs> So this week it'll be Chris with the audio problems. Can you can you can you say that again? Can, we, can I hear you talk? Check one two. It's weird. Yeah, it sounds like you're like really far away. Okay, hold up. So we've been yeah March is the anniversary of this broadcast of this show. We've been doing it for six years. I don't know if you guys know how we did that or how that even hap- came about. Oh, you know what? I'm on the wrong camera here. Watch this, watch this, Lenny. Ready, ready, watch this. Bam! Look at there, there you go. There we go. So, um, there was a, I'm, you know, I was trying to figure out how to promote this book. Cheers. Yep. Right after I wrote, right when it came out. And uh, I was doing my just some old school research on on what was available out there as far as marketing. How, is that better, Chris? Is this better? Yeah, that's better. Oh, yeah. And um, came across a a very small little messianic network that um, all they did was audio. They didn't do video, which was really strange to begin with because it's all about video, and. And not only did they not do video, they were doing Skype audio, which made no sense at all. And um, they, it, it, what you had to do to get to go live to broadcast was it was pretty archaic. Um, I guess they figured out a way to do it and it worked for them, even though it wasn't the best way to do it. And so they just stuck to it instead of like figuring out the better way anyway. So I was asked to co-host, to, to guest host on a, um, they would do these Torah portions where they would talk about the Torah portion uh, in like a little round table. And there was four of us. And they asked if I would co-host, guest co-host on, on it. And I said, sure. And, and so I did. And after about two or three weeks, they asked if I would like to take the show over. So I would be the host of their Tuesday show, their, their Tuesday uh, Let Us Reason Together, I think it was the name of it. And, um, and I said, wow, okay, well, let me think about it because, you know, making a commitment, you know, to do this every Tuesday morning, that's a, that's a big commitment. <laughs> Can you believe we've been doing it for six years? That's insane. So I'm like, so I, so I said, yeah. And, um, and so not only did I say, yeah, and I, and I inherited the two co-hosts that I had. They had been there a very long time. They'd been around for one of them actually worked with like Ron Wyatt and had, you know, it was, yeah, pretty interesting stuff. And the other guy was just this really older man and he just disappeared. I don't know whatever happened to him. But anyway, I inherited the co-hosts. I inherited the show, <coughs> the 745 start time, um, and and then after then something was going on with Skype, and so they were going to have to switch from Skype to another archaic form of broadcasting. Uh, and then so I remember I remember they got to the, I mean it was I'm talking it was archaic. 
And I remember them saying, uh, we went to, I remember when we did Google, Google Hangouts was at least a step up. And now, so now we were doing Google Hangouts, which was actually a really good platform. Um, the fact that Google got rid of it is, is pretty silly because it, it was actually a good platform. So, so we were on Google Hangouts. Uh, again, all audio. And, and they kept saying that their servers, which doesn't make any sense because none of this is being done on a server, right? I mean, Skype isn't on your personal server. And so they were saying that they didn't have the bandwidth, they didn't have the, 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 the ability to live stream uh, on, on their server. And I'm like, it doesn't work that way. There's no, it's not like you're running the internet off your computer. <laughs> They didn't understand though, so they, they couldn't do it. They couldn't figure it out. And and we were doing Google Hangouts one day, and then on, and by that time I changed the name to Chameleon Church because it just didn't make any sense. Because we started doing more than just the Torah portion. We started talking about you know stuff. And uh, and so one Tuesday morning I'm like, you know what? Damn the torpedoes! And I literally just flipped the switch to go live video in the middle of the show and they were so mad at me and I'm like it's Google Hangouts Google doesn't sit on your computer <laughs> they didn't understand and so I just I just said look this is ridiculous I've been playing nice I'm, I, I've let you know I, I've been playing with your incap your, 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 your lack of understanding of how this stuff works and I'm like yeah, I'm, I'm not gonna do that anymore we're gonna be we're gonna do video and so I flipped the switch went live with video and and I, and I made the other two guys flip their switch to go live on video because they were like oh no we, we can't break the rules we have to obey it's like you're obeying someone that doesn't know what they're talking about flip the switch video and they got mad had a couple little meetings with the principal's office and then they and I, and I, I think to, they, they understood what I was explaining to them enough to actually go live. And I go, look, you need to get a YouTube account, and they got a YouTube account. And that's how that network went video. And um, anyway, then I inherited another co-host that they would come they would come to the show for me, but they would stay for him. Remember that that joke? Yeah. And um, and it was it was when you when you it's like when you when you sign up with a record company it's to expand your 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 territory right you you sign to a record company so that they can help you get more eyes more ears more sales uh, more marketing opportunities you know what I'm saying record companies have a machine that they kind of just run you through and that's going to enhance your market value and your What's the word, Chris? Your market potential and your audience. You know, they're going to grow your audience because you're now on the label. Well, being on this network was supposed to do that, but it wasn't. This network was so um, limited in their ability to do what they did that I was actually bringing numbers to their network versus them bringing numbers to my broadcast. And... And it was becoming uncomfortable because they weren't <laughs> able to help my broadcast grow. I instead was literally bringing people to their network. And I couldn't, um, it was, uh, it got to the point where I was not comfortable bringing people into their network because of how they did things and the broadcasting, just a whole bunch of different things, like little things like that. So we decided to leave. Uh, I said, okay, I'm going to take the show. We're going to go, we're going to do, we're going to go to travel log. We're going to do our own thing. Um, you know, if we can get other shows underneath our belt, awesome. But it's not like I have a need to be, uh, you know, to do that. But, um, and so we did. And then our last, our last show on that network, um, explaining why we were moving where we were moving to the reasons why we were moving we had we we had outgrown this little network and they were so angry 
I mean, they deleted that broadcast as soon as it aired. They deleted it from everywhere. So I could never even go back and get the archive. Um, they, like, wiped the computer. They wiped the, mem- the, the the hard drives of everything and they, everything that was. They burned the servers. <laughs> yeah, they burned the servers. Oh, my God. But they, like, deleted everything and anything I had ever done with them. It was like they were so angry. And then I got a scathing letter from these guys. I remember having to show it to Lenny because, you know, hey, Lenny, uh, am I really this guy? <laughs> am I really this monster? Anyway, they couldn't just let me go with a handshake and a smile and a, and a blessing. They had to demonize me. Anyway, so I'm not even sure when that was. That was like two or three years ago now, I think. Yeah. It's been a while. Did I, so did, Was it 2021 or? I don't know. It was after COVID started. It was after COVID. It was, we and it was, before, COVID. it was before me. I joined in April 21. I was thinking this last night. It's going wow. on three, three years. So I was like, no. I had to be doing this three years? How is that? That's not possible. I know. Well, and I count it by the conference, The you know, because it's like, okay, I was there a year. No. Then we had the conference, another year of conference. So this will be the third conference. Third How year. is that possible that you've been here for three years? Yeah, I don't know. What so it had to doing? be 2020 when I came on. Wow. That is, see, that's, that's, that, that's like abrupt. That, that's like, that's a, like a shock to the system. You can't sit, you can't st- say you've been here for three years, Chris. It's nuts. <laughs> time flies, man. No, but time is flying a lot faster than it ever has before. Anyway, so we, we started doing it here. I asked Lenny if he wanted to be a, you know, so I, I did it by myself for a while. That was just brutal because you got no, no, you got no one to bounce off of. You, you know, you're sitting there going, uh, you know, and so I go, hey, so, and I thought, you know what, Lenny, this is, I'm going to do this. Let's, let's bring Lenny on. And then Lenny and I did it for a little while. And then I thought, you know what, this would be a good idea because you were just barely getting in. You were, you were just trying to under, you know, hey, asking questions and stuff. <laughs> And I thought this would be great to have you on at this stage of your walk on that, of that stuff, because there's people out there just like you. There's people out there going, can I eat pizza during a feast of unleavened bread? You know what I'm saying? Um, Cause they don't know. And that's, and, you know, and so I, so I thought it would be a huge plus, not only, not only because of that, but obviously for all the obvious reasons, what you bring to the table, cause you know, obvious. Um, it's three years? Wow. It's getting scary. It's the time. This time is the time thing is just getting scary, man. Mm. Wow. What does that say? Time flies as you get older, Alan. Yeah. That's funny. Real funny. <laughs> they pulled a Hillary and bleached everything. <laughs> Bleach bit. Oh my gosh. Any access to those first shows? Um, I don't think so. I, 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 I don't think so. I mean, if you go to that other network, it's, it's, it's like, it's like I'm Moses and they, they, they destroyed every hint of my pre-existence. <clears throat> uh, I don't think so. I mean, I, no, I'm sure there isn't. You know, I still have a, I still have access to their YouTube channel, I think. Don't, don't say that very loud. Someone might hear you. I, think, uh, I don't think anybody from over there watches uh, us anymore. They were watching us for a while after I left. I don't think they do that anymore. But um, I don't know. And, I, and I'm, I don't want to take the time of downloading everything if, they, if I could access the files. Um, that would just be a pain in the butt. Um, no. So, so yeah, so we started over from like with zero one. So we have a podcast where we're, we, we half heartedly do. Um, and so what we do, we've gone back to the beginning of this outside off that other network and we've uploaded, I think. Yeah. So we're like two years behind or something like that. It's, yeah. What else? Hey, good morning, everybody. Alan Aguirre with host of your Chameleon Church Show, coming to you live and direct from the Wasatch back of northern Utah. It's still winter outside. 
Apparently, Provo Canyon's not doing very good right now. And what else? We got what, some sun flares coming up through Monday. And we've got an eclipse coming up. And then we're going to try and get to Passover without the world blowing up. <laughs> uh, Israel's pretty upset with the United States of America. Apparently, they're going to send some delegates to Washington. But uh, since the Biden administration, um, they didn't vote no, but they didn't vote yes. They just basically, what's the word? They just, uh, they abstained. Abstain, abstain so from the, voting. The UN unanimously voted for an immediate ceasefire. That'll be interesting to see how that plays out. Um, Report, you know, you guys know that Venezuela opened up their prisons and sent them all up here. Oh, yeah. Well, they're running around major cities, democratic cities, uh, doing their little gang stuff. And that's not going to fly very well when the local gangs are decide that uh, once they get once we get back into a little warmer weather, come, you know, the real spring and summer, um, we might be seeing some crazy gangland act activity against these um, foreign nationals that are trying to do business on their turf that's going to get ugly that's going to get really ugly everybody's trying to push biden's button right now to get him to do things before the next election oh my gosh like the president of mexico give us 40 billion dollars for all the countries here and open up uh lanes to well why Venezuela. not that he's proven to be a uh, Mr. Moneybags. He's got money oh, for yeah. nothing and uh, oh, yeah. chicks for free. <clears throat> They're going to try to bleed everything. Everybody sees the writing on the wall. The, the guys. Mm. Wow. And in the, in the meantime, all the nations right now, they're scurrying and scattering because they don't know what's coming down. They can see it, but uh, they're terrified. Let me just remind everybody that none of this was going on when Trump was in office. Everybody behaved. Everybody respected us. They feared us. You didn't. ISIS went back underneath the, the back into the rocks, into the caves, um, and everyone minded their p's and q's because they knew there was a real man in in the White House, contrary to. The previous guys, the couple previous guys before him, especially that other guy that changed his name to a to a Muslim name and called called himself president, um, and now look at everything's just a total mess. Our groceries. What, 50, 75 bucks buys at the grocery store today is just crazy. Oh, I got some gum and uh, a couple oranges. I sprung. I sprung. <laughs> it's just... how, much is, uh, how much is a box of cigarettes these days? Do you know? Oh, I don't know. I haven't, I haven't smoked in over four years. I, they're, I mean, I think, right, they're like 10 bucks, right? I don't, I don't know. I'm just. I I'm thinking they're probably like between, I... between 8 and $10, I'm thinking. I remember when I remember t me and me and Christina telling each other, "Okay, when it's sixty-five or seventy dollars a carton." I don't think people buy cartons anymore. You have to go get a loan. Yeah, you do. <laughs> yeah, I don't know how much. The, I know they're. I think they're between eight and ten. Oh, look! At, is that my daughter? <gasps> I heard someone buying some. I think they're eight-ish. Yeah. So my wife and I. So my wife and I used. To, we used to smoke. I we, we I know I'm I'm not sure I think she quit smoking right before me around the same time but I quit smoking I think four <laughs> years ago four or five years ago I think, um, but we used to tell each other when uh, if uh, if okay when cigarettes get to three dollars we'll quit. We didn't. <laughs> I remember being in Manhattan. And uh, I we ran out of cigarettes and I'm in Manhattan. I had to go down down to the little corner guy and i spent seven bucks on a pack of cigarettes and i thought oh my god what hey, is going on that guy's probably charging 15 now yeah so i always tell this story because it just tells you how where we've gone when it comes to inflation i would wake up every morning junior high 
what's that? Uh, I'm going to say 8th, 9th grade. 8th, 9th, and 10th grade. Easy. 8th, 9th, 10th grade. Okay. Wake up in the morning. Walk down my, the street to my, from my, you know, my parents' house. Make a left in the alley. Go through the back entrance of a little diner. I say hello. They say hello. There's two packs of Marlboro Reds on the counter for me. I put down my buck 20, 60 cents a pack. Put my buck 20 on the counter, grab my two packs of cigarettes. See you in the morning. Out the front door, go to school. I would smoke those two packs of cigarettes. I, I smoked two packs a day when I was 13, 14, 15. Yep. Next day, same routine. Two packs, buck 20, boom, out the front door. Oh, every day I did that, even on the weekends. Gross. 60 cents a pack, buddy. I used to pay 25 cents a pack. You used to smoke cigarettes? Yeah, until I was about 18, 19. Oh, I knew that. I had quite the experience. I mean, the height of the Jesus movement, I had a, what was it? Uh, a 1972 Chevy 4x4 raised to the hill. Huge tires. <laughs> going on my way to Mammoth, going skiing, and I, I rented a uh, <coughs> um, cab over. And five of my friends were with us, and they're all Christians, right? And I'm just, this was 72, I think it was. I was just coming to the Lord. And I was still smoking, and I stopped in Mojave to get some camels. And my friend looked at me. They, he said, you made an agreement with me before the Lord you'd stop smoking. This is no joke. And we're heading up 395 at night. And I wasn't driving. But I was sitting in the car seat. And my girlfriend was next to me. And everything was kosher. And uh, I snuck the cigarettes. I pulled one out. And we were going about 75 miles an hour. Great, great pickup. And I lit it up and they all looked at me and all of a sudden the car shut down, all the electronics went off. And uh, my friend Tommy, he goes, what are you doing? And he goes, you lied to the Lord. I threw the packs out the window and the truck started up by itself and we kept going. And it was, it was, a, it was a marker for me because back in those days, those kind of things happened. It just, it was so real. And I never smoked another cigarette again after that. Wow. That's cool. I, dude, when I first, so the, the first time I tried quitting was right before Tikva was born and she's nine and a half. And it was brutal, dude. It was so honking demonic. Oh my God. I was sleeping like in eight to 10 minute intervals because I, I, I was, it was, it was so bad. There was, you know, just, just detoxing. It was so bad, dude. It was so demonic. I mean, it was brutal, brutal. It was, uh, quitting drugs was easier than that, man. It was yeah, brutal. It was hard. And I was, I couldn't sleep. You know, like I said, I was literally sleeping in little minutes of incremental time. It was so bad. And uh, I, I went on, on a road trip with Corin, the extreme tour. We were doing, supporting them with some sound. I remember getting to, a, getting to the Northwest, and they go, so, yeah, we heard you quit smoking, man. How, how, how's it going? I go, I want a freaking cigarette. That's how it's going, you know. And uh, I was talking to a, she's dead now. I was talking to a friend of mine. She, um, she goes, yeah, you know, I quit smoking 35 years ago. I go, I didn't know you smoked. She goes, yeah. I quit smoking 35 years ago, and sometimes it'll be 11 o'clock at night. I'll be watching TV, and I'll think to myself, I could really go for a cigarette right now. And I'm like, that's not helping me. I don't want to know that 30 years from now I'm going to be jonesing for a fag. You know, it's like, that's insane. Anyway, I, that lasted maybe four months, and then I started smoking again. Yeah. But no, I quit. We quit, what, four or five years ago? I quit four or five years ago, and I uh, haven't – that's – Good to go, buddy. Good to go. How do we get on the cigarette thing? Talking how we got rid of the flesh. Talking about inflation and economy. Oh. Price of cigarettes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
talking about cigarettes versus gas or the price oh, of food. Oh, you think they're expensive now? It's crazy. Yeah. So, what's going on, boys? Maybe, maybe we'll end up somewhere later about repentance and strongholds and giving up our fleshly desires and Stronghold, repenting of our man. sins. Strongholds are real. Yeah, they are. Strongholds are real deals, man. And you know what's also, you know, what goes hand in hand with strongholds? Cycles. Cycling out. It's a, it's a nasty game, strongholds and cycles. And breaking that off of you and... and uh, why don't why don't you explain the cycle? You've you've talked about it before, but what do you mean for well, people? Well, you know, people cycle heard? out. People cycle out. Some people cycle out. I mean, I know people. I mean, I, I've I've known people that'll cycle out every ninety days. It's just not good. You know, they'll okay, everything's good. You know, going good with Jesus, and then all of a sudden, boom, brick freaking wall, dude. And it's like, and then they, it's like they lose ground. You know, they go back. My, here's the way my uncle would br brought it up. This is the way my uncle taught me, because I didn't know anything about any of this stuff, obviously, when I got saved. And uh, he's like, he's like he'd, he'd like pull me over, would, would stop, and he'd chat with me every once in a while, you know, you know to see how, how I'm doing, see how I'm progressing in my Christian walk. And um, he, um, he, he would go, well, you know, he explained it to me this way. Well, you, you keep going back to the grave, and digging up like an arm or a leg and, and it's like you're walking around with this leg cause like because you need it or you're walking around with this arm you know i would go to the grave and dig up my old man and grab a piece of the old man and i'd walk around with that piece of the old man and i was like well I, that, that's a good analogy that's a good vi visual because that's literally what you're doing you, know, you just need to leave him dead you need to leave him dead leave him there you don't need that anymore. And then, of course, you, when you read The Great Divorce with uh, C.S. Lewis, The Great Divorce, the guy with the little demon on his shoulder, oh, no, I need this. No, it's okay. It's okay. And they kept, well, I'm sorry, we can't let you in. The angel's telling him, I can't let you in with that little demon. You got to gotta, gotta let me remove it from him. And then when he does, it's like it becomes a horse and he becomes this, you know, he becomes who he's supposed to be. It's just awesome. So I know people that will cycle out in 90 days. You know, they just, they just, it's like, they lose all ground. They lose whatever, whatever they, you know, was keeping them going. It's like they, it's like totally forget that it even existed. It's like, it's like they, they just go back. It's walking backwards down the stairs. Larry Norman even had a song about it, you know, walking backwards down the stairs. And um, they just, it's like, they just quit. They quit and they forget everything that led them up, that got up to that point, and they just cycle out. And they go, they revert back to, everything their attitudes their their the issues i mean whatever whatever it is that person's going you know that 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 makes that person who he is in the flesh they just go back to it it's just bizarre it speaks to the importance of community like lenny you know he's he's coming to, to knowledge right and he's got his friends you know from both sides lenny was somehow the, his friends had somehow created a scene where even though Lenny was on the journey, he felt like, hey, bro, he had skiing bros. And then, but then it, then Lenny kind of crossed the line and his friends call him out for Lenny's destiny, for Lenny's yeah. calling, you know? It just, well, but see, that's he, the thing. And, and that's why I've always said, I mean, living in community, it, that's why it's set up to live, that's why they set it up like that, to live in communities. I mean, the, the nation of Israel, well, the people groups, and, and then just the di discipleship, you know, the New Testament model, living in community. Living in community is the hardest thing people can do because when you decide to cycle out or when you decide not to cooperate with the Holy Spirit, when you decide to do you, there you are surrounded by people that are going to call you out on it. They're going to go, hey, man, you're, you're blowing it. You have a, you've been waking up with a really bad attitude. Are you are, are you praying? Are you fasting? You know they, they're gonna and, they're, and that's just gonna you're, you're you're poking the bear. You're poking the demon at that point because you're gonna manifest. 
So communal, that's why communal living is so crucial to the success of this thing, because if you're going to do it, if you're going to do it for real, yep. you're not going to not want to have these people talking and speaking into your life, you know, to keep you in check. And you're, you're going to stop messing around. You're going to stop doing the things that cycle you out because we're not going to be really necessarily cognizant of the fact that we're cycling out. I'm just having a bad day. No, you're having more than a bad day, buddy. You're being you know? disobedient. Lenny, yeah. what, 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 if you reflect on it now, I don't know that you've ever thought about it. How did, how did they create that comfortableness for you? And when he pushed you to that, how, why didn't you just say, forget you? Like how, why did you, what made you listen? It's interesting. All four of us out of our whole group in Eagle Rock, we're the only ones that actually were trying to, we sought the Lord. We were, remember, we were fresh in the Jesus movement. All four of us guys went into Shiloh, which was the communal ministry of Calvary Chapel back then. Two of so, us. So they were, the, on the, they were on the journey just starting. They were on the you? same journey. Oh, they wow. were farther along than me. I mean, two of the guys were used to be heavy druggies. Two of us were just alcohol. Well, we weren't even alcoholics. We were wannabes, you know. <clears throat> and it's interesting. All these four guys, two of us went on to be pastors the rest of our lives. The one went through three marriages and he's still trying to seek the Lord and he's doing okay. The other guy, he became, it's interesting. He went to China as a missionary, stayed there three years, did sign language, learned with his wife, cheated on his wife, got a Chinese gal, kicked her out. And that's when I had the Burbank Vineyard when I came in a real close. He was the guy that brought me to the Lord. And, um, then he got bitter for a bunch of years, and I, he resurfaced later on. But I'm going, it's interesting you're talking about this, but we were all in this place of we we wanted someone to mentor us. That's why we went into Shiloh. But I remember those days of if it wasn't for that, I was getting cultivated. You know how the – exactly what you're talking about, the parable of the sower. That's what the – you're talking about, that cycle. And um, I remember how – it was so important to have that type of accountability with one another. And the house ministries back then for us was just, it's what really grounded me getting into the word and cultivating the word of God into me. I didn't know it. I mean, we, back then we were just, we were by rote going through these 20 chapter studies till all of a sudden it became part of us, but we had the ability to speak into one another and say, no, you're, you're in sin. Stop it. All right. And we let each other do that to each other. You don't see that in church. You, no. you, you don't see that in a local community. So it was foreign to us when we got out of that communal ministry because I'm going, this ain't right. Yep. Everybody's just going in and out. And there's no relationship or accountability to say, look, at you're blowing it. Yeah. That's the same model we had. in. Um, yeah. Down in, uh, in Guatemala. Yeah. They had, Guatemala. you know, because that that was the Jesus movement. They, it was a like you said. It was it was a bunch of hippie uh, Jesus movement hippies that went down there. So that's how that's the model I had as well. The um, that's why communal living is so difficult for people is because they're not used to take people don't like being told what to do and they don't like being called out on their crap. They just don't. They don't. And so and you can't live in community out like without that. I mean. Com Community, community life won't, doesn't work if you won't allow those type of dynamics in, in and around you. So that's why communal living is so crucial, but it's also why so many people have a hard time with it. And it's, it's, it's very difficult. We've lived in community the majority of our lives up until yeah. about five years ago or so. And um, so the 90-day cycle is really, really kind of prevalent. But then there's other one, you know, six month cycles. The ninety, the ninety day one is really difficult because they're never. It's like remember how the the, 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 the sower, right? We were talking about they don't the the see the the root the roots don't don't ever take hold. And that's what that that parable is about, you know. That's exactly. It's, it's laid out 
on dry ground and the sun scorches it up or the birds eat it or it does the hard the, the heart right the foul it's not fallow ground their heart is hard and so it's on the, the seed is unable to germinate and, and build a uh, create a, a deep root system and so 90 days is not enough time to for for any of that you, you, 90, that's, that's a joke 90 days and right it doesn't have enough time for that and so they cycle out and there's no root and so it's it's uprooted they do their thing and then they do this you know every 90 days so that's really popular 90 day cycles but it's very difficult to work with i mean incredibly difficult to work with those people pretty much aren't going to survive this they're going to leave and they do uh the six month one is a little easier but that's just as difficult because you can you can it takes usually three months or well they say it takes three weeks to create a, a habit and so you so that's why the 90 day thing is so frustrating because they start they, they're doing things you know it takes you know it takes them three weeks or whatever a month and then they then they have like a month or so maybe six weeks of, of everything's good and then they just fall apart six months it's real gets real frustrating because again you you if the longer you do it you would hope it sticks but then they decide to cycle out um it's usually 90 days six months lenny correct me if you're wrong you have, you've done this longer than i have then you've got um it's usually 90 six months nine months and then 12 to 15 months i think the lord gave us a cue he said some will bring forth 30 60 and 100. there you go right <laughs> You know, it's interesting. I, there's, I think there's some hidden things in that, and that was about the cultivation in the yeah. heart of the person. Yeah, but what's really scary is 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 when 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 it pops up 10, 12, 15 years later, and it goes, "Hey, oh, yeah. man, how's it going?" And you're like, "What? I got rid of you like a long time ago." And they're like, "Hey, man, just seeing how what's up, you know?" And it's like you're just like, "No." Sometimes, man, it, it'll pop up. Why, that's why these guys can grow ministries for 20 plus years and all of a sudden they're like, what happened to that guy? Well, a familiar spirit showed up and he succumbed to it. It's This thing is designed not to work. The world, not, 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 not God's system. But the world system is designed to make sure you don't succeed at this in any way, shape, or form. You know, Whew. that's why he said a double portion, you've asked for a very hard thing. Why does it have to be a hard thing? Why would a double portion of God's anointing have to be a hard thing? Well, because it conflicts with the, the time-space continuum. It is... And if we're, you know, we're humans. We, that, we were talking last night, Monday night, last night at our Monday night gathering about one of the sisters shared about all the stuff she had to unlearn, <laughs> all the things she had to unlearn in order to walk this new lifestyle. It's the same thing. We have to unlearn, you know, but that's the way God made me. No, that's your flesh. That's demonic. You were born in sin. You're, you know, you, yeah, that's, that's your flesh. You, the, your soul, your flesh has to die so that your new man can come up. And that new man isn't, you know, it, you can't, if, when you start dressing your new man with the old, with the old, right? It's, it's the wineskin thing. It doesn't work, you know. I know you think that's how God made you, and I know you think it's a, that's who you are, and that's your, you know, because that's what happens when, when when it comes to discipleship. Oh, I was in a cult. They tried to change me. They they wouldn't let me be who I was. <laughs> Those are all the buzzwords, you know. Um, no, we were just trying to help you to, you know, and that's why we would bring up. To, wash your clothes wash your bedding turn off the light clean up your room turn the light off when you leave the room you know take the trash out these are all basic stuff because you know these people have a hard time doing that stuff and most of them do because they they're just they're just little children they're not disciple they're not disciplined they're not discipled so when it comes to then, then you know so not only are you warring here this is the, the battleground of your mind. Not only is that happening, but the enemy's just sitting there going, you know, they're taking advantage of you. Um, it's just insane. The stuff that you hear in communal living that people believe are actually happening or that you're doing to them. 
That's bringing back flashbacks. Right? I mean, I mean it's insane. Oh I saw people come and go, and I used to see my own heart having to go through that. This verse, and it's interesting. The whole book of Hosea is about <laughs> doing the right thing before God, but it says, so to yourselves in righteousness, reap in mercy, break up your fallow ground, for it's time to seek the Lord till he comes and rains righteousness upon you. That's It's a song we used to sing in the communal ministry, but it was one of those things that always stuck in my heart that I got to break up that ground. And when the Lord was talking about the sower and the ground and the soils and all that kind of thing, I go, it's up to me to cultivate that. It's up to me to cultivate that in others, too. That's what discipleship is. Right. But see, that's why it also says, humble yourself one to one to another. Yes. Confess your sins one to another. Yes. If you're sick, go to the leadership so that you, you can be healed. It's like there's that's why there's this methodology. <coughs> we need that. Sorry, I had I just thought I'd interject that. You're up. No, I had a cough. Sorry. But that's discipleship. People don't like it. They don't like being told, and they don't like being told no, and they don't like being told that they're wrong. Because right, we've we've built these these high places in our minds and in our hearts about who we are. We actually know what we're doing. We actually got it going on. Here's here's some here's 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 some community. Here, let me trigger letting some more. Here's some communal life stuff. Unfortunately, I have this gift that um, I pretty much, a lot of times, I know whether they're going to succeed or not. And uh, just, just for various reasons. But my favorite is when they, be, when they get so smart after two years or whatever, two or three years, they get, they get so smart that they're now smarter than you. And they're trying to explain to you how, well, they always come. They always want to have a little sit down with you. They're, they're, they're about to leave. We know they're about to leave. We, we know they're leaving. Six months before they're leaving, we know they're leaving. And then they, they, then they finally ask for that little sit down meeting so they can convince you how God has told them it's time for them to leave. And <laughs> <laughs> right, Lenny? Me and, and Lenny so we, used to call that the loaded gun. God said. Oh, my God. And so, God you know, said. you sit down with these people. You already know what's going on, what's going to happen. You sit down with them, and they, like, start telling you, you know. Do you know how many I times pastors hear that? God said. Yeah. There you go. I've learned so much, and this and this and that. And, 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 you know, I've been praying a lot about it. That means, like, three days. Um, and, and you know, and it, I think, God, you know, it's time for me to move on. God, God wants me to move on. And we're like, really? So two things. One um you're here because you couldn't hear god before you're here because you couldn't do any of this uh, well, you're here because you're really bad at doing all of this and so one um wow you've been able to learn all that that quickly that's amazing so now god speaks to you directly and you can hear that now because before you couldn't you're, you were a shipwreck your life was a disaster and now you're so proficient in these areas that you can hear God for yourself. Don't you think, since we, well, one, that also speaks of how amazing we are at being able to do that for you. <laughs> you're right. We're so good at this, at what we do, that you're able to do something now in a matter of months that you couldn't do in years, right? So that we're so we're we're pretty good. And and then don't you also think that if God is actually speaking to you that he would have told us too that it was time for you to leave <laughs> right it, and, and it's just this happens so often it's it's it's, it's mind blowing it's it's like like Lenny Lenny's like your faces are flashing through your mind <laughs> Chris you can speak to this you lived in community oh yeah how did that go it was great in hindsight <laughs> Right in hindsight, it's it's a whole different thing in hindsight. I yeah, remember... I think when well, yeah when 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 I got married, I was living with you, and then we got married, and um, all kinds of stuff going on. You know, like when when you're in your twenties, everything is so freaking serious. So and, true. 
and when I've reflected on when I quit the band the first time <laughs> with you, like, it's like, you're so freaking intense and, and people aren't used to that. You know, people yeah. aren't, and now you might say people aren't, we're in the minority talking about Torah. You're in the minority talking about messianic charismatic and you, you weren't Torah observing then, but you were, charismatic observing and prophetic and and when that's happening the enemy wants to bring division like when you're in community the enemy wants to like separate things and so that's like the the jam on the bread every morning (laughs) yeah and so that's like when you're new to that and then it's so easy to say oh god told me this god told me that's when really it's a little more simple it's just like personality like just like the rhythm of life is just like yeah this ain't gonna work so but the enemy can stir that up but then if you stay faithful to the lord he works it out you know he brings shalom and he brings peace and then brings um what's the what's the restitution restores yeah. relationships and but yeah i've had it i mean you even see it uh being an employee or uh, having employees, you, you you have that same thing where someone's like, you can just tell someone's going to quit because of their performance or like just the vibe changes in your weekly meetings. And you're just like, what are they thinking? They're not being honest. Mm-hmm. Like, you don't have to agree on anything, but like, don't like come to me and talk about it. And let me. And one of the things I would always say if someone said, "Hey, Chris, I'm I'm looking for a job. I've taken," and I'll I would just I would just say, "Hey, okay, cool. Just clarify something for me. Are you saying you've decided and you're moving on, or is this a conversation and you want to hear from me?" And usually they'd go, "Yeah, I've decided." I'm like, "Oh, okay." Because <laughs> if you try to convey it, it just doesn't work, and then the relationship right. sour. But sometimes they'd be like, well, I'm really thinking about it. And then you're able to paint for some perspective and ask those questions you're talking about that probably often you didn't get to answer and bring to light, you know. But how many times is it around a relationship? The girls found a guy who's not in the community, who's off his rocker, or a guy's going along good, and then he meets a hottie, and, you know, it's just like, Oh my gosh. Yeah. Secret sin. Yeah. Um, habitual sin. Yep. One of the greatest moments in my Christian walk. I um, we were we were we were booked to play a music festival in Alaska in nineteen ninety seven. And um, Chris formative years were in Alaska and I know that I knew that Chris was back in Alaska. And uh, he had left the band maybe two or three, two years prior to this or something like this. Anyway, so we show up to Alaska and I'm like, man, I know Chris is going to be there. I know Chris is going to be involved and this is going to be a very, uh, I wasn't looking forward to it. I was dreading it actually. And um, we get there, we got there, we get to the, the event space and I, there's Chris running around because he's working the event. And, uh, and I was like, oh man, this is going to be rough. Because, you know, we didn't, part and on, on nice it wasn't it was it was difficult and this is kind of like pre-email and facebook oh, and all yeah. that so there was a uh, layer of disconnect yeah and um we just looked at each other and smiled and just hugged each other and loved each other and it was it's brotherhood man yeah yeah, yeah. it was awesome it was awesome and and here we are today And I think that's what I'm saying. Like things can seem so dramatic when you're younger. I mean, we were so much younger then. And, and then water's under the bridge and time. You're like, what was, why was it so dramatic? What was happening? You know, if you're, if you stay with the Lord, you don't sabotage and you just go, I can't, I remember feeling like it was dramatic, but now I would definitely do it different. And you just like, I mean, you, you were you were in Park City with us in '97. You remember that, Lenny? Yep. Meeting Chris back then—that was a long time ago. That's when Linda, yep. yeah, spoken to Chris. In your in your prophetic house group, praying over us—that was mind blowing. 
I wrote that down in my Bible that night. You, I you, prop, that. you put us all in the center. I think we had spaghetti. You put us all in the center and <laughs> your team prophesied over each members of the band. I was like, that, and that was the first word I ever got. Wow. Wow. Yeah. A lot of history between the three of us. Mm-hmm. And <laughs> there's something about us as humans not wanting to cooperate. I mean, well, we have, we, we, for some reason, we believe that, well, we have rights. <laughs> we have rights. And these are like, mine and I'm going to protect them and I'm going to die on this hill and all that kind of stuff, you know, and what we have a hard time separating that from what it is that's required of us to do this thing successfully. And that's take up your cross daily. What does that mean? That means you're supposed to crucify yourself on a cross every day. See, take up your cross daily is a nicety. It's on a doily at a Christian bookstore. You know what I'm saying? It's on a, it's on your great, on your grandmother's wall in a little frame. You know, it's, 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 it, it has absolute re- no relevance, no depth, nothing, no power, when you do when they've because of what they've done with it. But no, pick up your cross daily literally means yep. when you wake up in the morning, you walk to that that yep. you know you walk to those that, that stake you put your left hand out and somehow i don't know how you're going to do it but that's what you got to figure out and you take that mallet and you start driving the, that that spike into your hand and then somehow you got to do it with the other one die to self and then you got to get propped up you have to die on a cross you have to crucify yourself your flesh your soul because that's what the soul is the flesh so that your spirit man, see, you need to let your spirit man nail that sucker on this on the cross, and you leave you and you walk away, or you turn around, you walk away, and you don't look back because the man that takes puts his hand on the plow and looks back isn't worthy of the kingdom of heaven. That's what take up your cross daily means. Be a living sacrifice. That's your that's that's your temple service duty is to throw yourself on the altar and you light that freaking match by on your own and you let that altar fire consume you daily first corinthians 15 31 paul said i die daily daily That's what we signed up for. If you're not ready for it, no problem. No, you know, don't leave mad. Just leave. <laughs> you don't have to do this. That's yeah, the best I'm... part about Christianity is you're not required to do any of this. But that's what you signed up for. That's what you're. So here's the thing: when you're when you tour in a band and you're in like five different towns in a week, it's really interesting because you'll walk into a town and you'll set up, and you'll walk in and you're like, wow. These people don't actually know what they're doing, and what the people that and the people at venue that venue, for some reason they don't take into consideration that this is what you do, and even though this is their venue, right? They're proud of their venue. This is their venue. This is what it's all about. You know, it's all about their venue, and they think they're like you know, psh. what they don't take into account is that you do this on a weekly basis. You're in various levels of venue of professionalism and of whatever. Um, and so you, you know, you know how this is done and you're not just limited to that one space. You go, you're in various spaces all throughout the week for two, three months at a time. They don't, they don't, they don't recognize it. They don't, they don't see that. They don't, they're, they're removed from that, right? They have their reference. They have their little piece of, you know, whatever. And, and this is their reference experience. Your reference experience as a touring musician is a lot more vast because it's more vast than that because you're in various venues throughout the week. Okay, how, what am I saying? Well, in the same way, you come into Christendom, you come into Christianity, most people don't, in the same way that that venue can't understand that you have a better reference to how these things work than they do, even though they're the venue owner. Um, when you get, when you're walking, this is why there's a hierarchy in Christendom. You know, think about uh, Amway, right? You, you have your upline. These guys have done it longer. 
They've been doing it for 20, 30, 40 years, which means they've done it successfully to an extent because they're still doing it. They're still around. They know things you don't know. It's like chess. They know those four, five, six, seven, eight moves ahead. That's, that's where they're playing. And you're like, oh, you're right there, you know. Um, and you're supposed to listen to them. It'll be, it, it'll be to your benefit if you listen to them because they know better. They've done this longer. You know, I'm talking about stuff and Lenny's over there grabbing his head because he's flashing back because it's, it's, we don't have to reinvent the wheel. This wheel's been, been going on for 2,000 years. That's why it says what it says. Apostles, prophets, for the equipping, for the maturing of, so that you're no longer tossed to and fro, so that you don't just gobble up every wind of doctrine. Oh! Yeah. I'm going to and go with the, you know, whatever nonsense you, can, you people do. What's that? Those kind of mentors, and let's say those those are the people leading the community or whatever it is. It's like the Bible speaks a lot about perseverance and faithfulness. And when they built that history year over year over year, the highs and lows, they're, they're more like, you know, seen this before, seen this movie before, seen this way before, and they're able to like, not be you know just kind of be the stability in a community and it, it's just so needed and i think taking it to things we talk about with evangelical christianity these days the senior leader is trying to have that thing and and there's all these people that are still looking to survive and they're not seeing a daily pattern of this lived out and how you live with each other and call each other's sins out. And yeah, faithfulness and perseverance is what I'm seeing. And that, and, yeah. and, and when, when you have youth, you have newbies, they need to see the faithfulness and perseverance and, and feel like not being managed or attacked or coerced by these people, but like this, like, yeah trust it's like you can trust me i've been here before right. and how how you establish that i don't know if it's rules of engagement but like well you're going to get what you put into it i mean if you're coming to a situation if you're coming into this thing and you have no intention of 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 getting with the program right you're not going to submit you're not you're not going to walk under authority you're not going to do any of that stuff, right? I mean, that's why it says, hey, you want to submit to your leadership, you know, it's going to be better for you if you're, if you're not being a pain in the ass to them because they have to give an account for you. You know, there's, there's all, there's so many dynamics. There's so much instruction in the New Testament about what we're talking about. If, you're, if you come into this thing and you don't show, it's like, Oh, I, I can play guitar and you sign up and you go to an audition and you, and you get there and you find out, you know, if you've been by yourself in your bedroom all day long for two or three years and you and, and, and your and your friends and your family tell you, oh, you're so amazing. Right. Then you show up. You don't know you're a lawn gnome until you're actually hanging out with non lawn gnomes. Right. Yeah. As a lawn gnome, you think everybody's a lawn gnome. There's a lawn gnome. There's a lawn gnome. I'm sitting. There. But then all of a sudden now you're with a bunch of people and you and you think you're not. A, you don't know that you're a lawn gnome. You're, and all of a sudden really, you're like, yeah, you're a really big fish in right. a small pond when the pond is your room. Yeah. So you've been doing this for two or three years. I've seen it. You've seen it. Two or three years as a guitarist or a drummer or a singer, or whatever. Then you go to audition to be in a band and you show up and it's like, what are you doing? You're not a real guitarist. What? Sure I am. Same thing with Christianity. You're in there reading your Bible all by yourself and the Holy and, and what you think is the Holy Spirit is talking to you and oh how would you know the difference? Stick or snake? Stick or snake? Who told you how do you know you have discernment unless you got discernment unless someone told you you had discernment, right? You can't do but people do this all day long, right? Lenny, they're by themselves doing Christianity, hearing God thinking they're hearing God, thinking they're hearing the Holy Spirit, right? Then they get around real Christians and we go, right, this, there's, a, this, there's a disturbance in the force when you walked into the room, but you don't know that, but you're the disturbance because you're a demonic agent, buddy. <laughs> but you don't know that. You don't know you're a lawn gnome. 
because you're, you're by yourself in your room. You're spiritual on them. Oh, oh my god. god. <laughs> this is more. This happens more than any. I mean, I see it all the time, especially in the Torah community. Oh, it's prevalent in the Torah community. These people are just freaking nuts. Oh my gosh. I'd, I'd have thought about dying to self. Like, it, it, it reminds me of that conversation we were having about it's a daily choosing to get on the cross, a daily choosing to let down your motives in priority to God of the Angel Army's design. And it uh, makes uh, one of my favorite, makes me think of one of my favorite verses in the Psalm. It's in Psalm 73. Um, Whom have I in heaven but you? That speaks to there's one. And there is nothing on earth which speaks to your heaven, your, your, your want shouldn't be on earth. There is nothing on earth that I desire. It doesn't say more than you. There's nothing on earth that I desire more than you. There's nothing I, on earth that I, that I desire besides you. So it's saying there's one desire. There's nothing on earth that I desire besides you. My only desire is you. Not there's nothing I desire more than you. No, it's it's not it's not prioritization of your desires. It is what is your desire, and you should have one. It, and and I think when you talk about smoking, you're talking about sexual sin. You're talking about uh, cursing. Like like the other day, I'll, I'll give you a personal. This was yesterday. I just came downstairs and I'm getting ready to get in the shower and I'm just like, and I just let, I just let out this curse word. And I'm immediately convicted and I'm like, what is, why did I say that? And it was like that. Oh, what a day. Oh, finally I get to get in the shower. It's just like one of those. Whew. What a day that was bleep. You know, like it was just, and I was like, God, forgive me. Why? What is that? It's not the cursing that's the sin. It, why is that the first response of my heart? Because of today. Why are, and I was just like, God, forgive me. Like, where did that come from? Why, why am I so quick that that is the first thing out of my mouth? And the cigarette, it, the smoking isn't the sin. This, the sin is when you feel, oh, man, I could really go for a smoke. Why are you craving that and not the Lord? Why, 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 what is it in our heart? What, I mean, and I think, and I have, I have friends that talk to me about drinking, pouring, pouring a four-finger glass of whiskey every night before bed. Wow, that's a lot. What is that in them that they're like, I need a release right now. Today was a long day. I'm going to unwind with whiskey. Whiskey isn't the sin. It is you are taking your emotions somewhere that God wants to say, no, no, no. Take me. Let me be your four-finger whiskey. Come to me. Bring those <laughs> emotions. Bring your tiredness to me. Bring, bring your frustration to me just like David did. Every single emotion. The emotion isn't bad. It's what we do with the feeling and the emotion. And he wants us to take it to him, not yeah. go to drugs, not go to the cigarette, not go to the curse word. And that's what it, that that's dying to self. What, what am I not dying to? And what is the substitution for the cross and God's and Jesus saying, no, come to me. I already died for that. Join me in that death because you're going to be better. And in the, in the case of, cigarettes you're actually going to be healthier too and live longer for your children yeah but that's what that conversation made me think cigarette about. smoking was a prop I, you know i sang in a band for most of my life it was a prop you know it started off as a prop and then you just but that the nicotine thing um and but yeah i know i understand what you're talking I, I yes fully agree and understand and and I, yeah we, See, we, we we think choose. we have a right to sin we have a right to our sin my I said it earlier. It's our rights. Listen, this is what in CJB says on the very verse we're talking about. Brothers, by the right to be proud, which the Messiah Yeshua our Lord gives me, I solemnly tell you that I die every day. 
That's what Paul said. So basically what he's saying is he goes, I have a right to be proud that the Messiah, that I'm honoring him, that I see him, that I have this privilege to die every day. Because right after that, he says, what comes with that is the resurrection of life. Because he goes on to talk about those that have been raised from the dead. And you talk about the power that we, we need now to overcome self always comes right back to that. that we're a new creature. We got eternal life. We've been raised with him. And that's not a lot on our minds unless you know that you die daily. Yeah. Then you know you've risen with him. Yeah. It's like what we talked about last night. We have been ransomed. <laughs> by his blood we have an obligation to live up to that and that has nothing to do with you your kiros your desires your wants your actual needs you know it's like you think about well of course they had a reason to complain in the desert there was no water there was no food no see that's 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 human reasoning after everything they had seen up to that point, why would they believe or revert to their human reasoning that, oh, even though he did all that, now we're going to die because we have no food or water? You know, it's just, it's just they weren't they weren't heavenly minded. They weren't spiritually minded, and that has everything to do with this. Because right, like what you just said, Lenny. Can you reread re that? I, I forgot my thought. The complete Jewish Bible version. Yeah, it says, brothers, by the right to be proud, which the Messiah, Yeshua, our Lord, gives me, I solemnly tell you that I die yeah. every day. That, um, another way he puts it, right, Paul said, humble yourself one to another. This doesn't work without humbling yourself to one another. See, because if you're thinking about your rights, I have rights and privileges you're not, you know, and it says, consider that your brother higher than yourself. There's so much in the New Testament saying that kind of stuff. Consider them, humble yourself, don't think yourself, don't esteem yourself higher or think that you're higher, you know, all that stuff. Because that's those imaginations in our minds about who we think we are about ourselves. As a singer in the band, I can write a book about that, you know. Um, you know how many singers did it take to screw in the light bulb? One, to hold it, and the universe revolves around it. See, um, <laughs> so many mirrors, so little time. I got, I got, I got, I can do this all day. Um, that's why it says what it says about the humility and the humbling, and the and and, and you have to be hum You have to be in a place of humility and and submission to allow yourself to be dead uh, on a daily basis, to allow yourself to be put on an altar, right? Because what? Because the boasting and, and the haughtiness. We, we build ourselves up. We don't need that. We, I don't, you know, I don't, you're not the boss of me and all this other stuff, Korah and all that. Yeah, the reason why Moses was able to pull it off was because he humbled himself. He was humbled. 40 years in the desert watching sheep after being a prince of Egypt for the throne. He was going to, he was going to sit on that throne with his mother, his adopted mother. And then he's like in the backside of the mountain, 40 years watching sheep. And that's what it took those two 80 years combined for him to do what he did as a deliverer of Egypt, as a Levite. He's so the meekest, meekest man on earth. That's what it says. That's, but I love it. That's what Moses says about himself. That's awesome. <laughs> um, so in, in this, no, I'm, I'm, that's just a joke. Everyone likes to, to throw that one around that it's, you know, how weird is that? Moses said he was the humblest man on earth. Um, so as so in order for us to succeed in this in any way shape or form we have to consider him that went before us that died for us that 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 did what he did on our behalf and then we have to emulate that and it's so easy for us to put our flesh and it's that layer Oh, my needs, my carols, my desires, my wants. What about you know, me, 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 right? All that stuff. What about Bob? <laughs> so awesome. Best movie ever. So awesome. Richard Dreyfus is literally channeling my uncle. 
<laughs> in that movie. I swear to you, the clothes, how he held his finger. I mean, everything. When I first saw that, I went, oh, that's the way, that's my uncle in Guatemala right there, man. That's how he ran his church. He was that guy. And it was like, it's the mind, the biggest mind blowing thing. But yeah, oh, what about me? I need, I need, I want, I want, I want. Dude. And he cycled, all he did was cycle out. That, that guy, he didn't cycle out every 90 days. He was, he lived in the cycle. <laughs> Yikes. <sighs> All these instructions are so that it will go well with you. You want a deep root system. You want to do everything you need to do in order to participate, to, to cooperate with that deep root system occurring otherwise you're just gonna you know the next bad thing that happens or the next big thing that happens you're just gonna swept away you don't want to do that you want to break your cycles you know I, I I'm bold enough to believe that the majority of you guys watching your, the regulars here have experienced a breaking of cycles in your life since we started hanging out you know if that's the case, we need. I want to hear those testimonies because they're going to not only uh, empower you, but you're going to empower your fellow brothers and sisters that are watching along with the, with you. Let's do that. Let's do like a testimony Tuesday next. Ooh, testimony Tuesday next Tuesday. Bring your testimonies on how the Holy Spirit, how your understanding of things, the Holy Spirit has brought you to the point where um, you've you've. You've broken cycles. You've broken strongholds. You've allowed the Holy Spirit to break cycles and strongholds in your life. Let's talk about that. Uh, so be prepared to, to share your testimonies, and we can read them, and we can post them for everyone. Um, let's do a Testimony Tuesday next, next week. Does that sound like a good idea? Yeah. I mean, why, why not, right? We're going to be in the middle of an electrical sunspot storm thing. We might even have the Internet, let alone your telephone or your cars. I have no idea. Can one of you guys pray us out? Would, would, would you mind? Go for it, Chris. Oh, Chris. Lord, I just I thank you so much for this Tuesday morning group. Thank you that you are faithful to us. When we reflect, oh, wow, it's been, Alan's been doing this six years. We joined at other times, and we just sense your spirit. I felt your spirit with us today leading us to this conversation about dying and, and even my own sin that I have cursing yesterday in the shower when I'm alone and you, no one else sees me. No one else on this call sees me, but you saw it. God changes. We repent of our sins. Yes. We want to be more like you help us this week. Let each person listening to this now prompt them now by the power of the Holy spirit in the name of the risen Lord, Yeshua prompt them where to die today. Prompt them with the desire that they've placed in place of the desire for you, the one that can deliver them, the one that's already delivered. You've already delivered. You've already fought the battle. You're already self-resurrected. You are, you are the king. We align with your kingdom. Whatever we give up, whatever we die to today and this week, I believe and, and declare exponential winning exponential uh, for whatever we let go you are exponentially replace in favor and blessing and joy we come under your shelter we come under our banner i declare we will not give up we will walk the narrow way thank you for dying for us thank you for resurrecting thank you for uh, inviting us into your kingdom we bless your name and join the angels and the elders in the throne room saying, holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty who was and is and is to come forever and ever and ever and ever and ever and ever and ever. We bless your name. Amen. Amen. You're listening to Chameleon Church. Biblical antidotes for the modern man. With your host, Alan Aguirre.
The views and opinions expressed during our broadcasts are solely those of the broadcast producers, hosts, and or guests, etc., and are not necessarily the views or opinions of the Travelog Network, its sponsors, or affiliates.